I'm not sure how to feel, and I don't know if that's intentional. Before we hop into this review of chapter 302 of My Hero Academia, please do me a favor and leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Now, let's get into it. What's up guys, I'm Glad Pencil here, and here we are to review chapter 302 of My Hero Academia. And, I do have mixed feelings. And the reason that is, is because I feel like we make too drastic a leap early on to the chapter. So the chapter opens up, and we don't even see the incident. We just see that Toya kind of attacks his family, but it's overwritten. And instead of Toya being allowed to, or no, Toya being banned from interacting with the rest of his family, considering he tried to kill two of them, he... Or maybe I don't know. My main issue with the opening of this chapter is that it skipped over what I feel like is a really important part of the Toya context, because... For some reason, he attacked his family out of nowhere, and it's just not being addressed. It's not being addressed at the beginning of this chapter, and I feel like that's something that needs to be addressed. We don't even get to see it, and we're doing a lot very, very good of seeing very important things, very important parts of Toya's past. But, you know, one of the biggest incidents of them, the one that caused Shoto to be put into the position that he is? I don't know. It feels weird that we skip over it. I guess maybe Horikoshi just didn't want to show it, but I feel like he's been good at showing everything else, so I don't know, I don't know why this is it. But... Fine, whatever. We told we learned that Shoto is not allowed to interact with the rest of the family, and Shoto is also being looked over by someone else instead of Ray. In that, Ray also believes that Toya just wants Endeavor to acknowledge him. And honestly, Endeavor says something I agree with and disagree with. He's like, I can't show him anything but the world of a hero. And I know what he means to say here, like. Endeavor's whole life revolves around herohood, so if he interacts with Dobby, a person who wants to be a hero despite the fact that he shouldn't be a hero, then he's going to end up causing Dobby more harm than good. Except Ray then calls him out on this and says, Hero, some hero you are, running away. And I'm, I like seeing Ray criticize Endeavor, but this, I think this is, she's sort of right and she's sort of wrong. I think she's right in the sense that he's running away from the idea that it's... He's running away from the idea that he needs to have a long express talk with Toya. Like, he's talked to them before, obviously, because he's apparently told Toya to stop this nonsense multiple times. But apparently it hasn't been enough, so he needs to deal with Toya in a more direct way. But I don't know, like, at this rate, I have no idea how to deal with Toya. In my mind, Toya should have been the one that gets isolated from the rest of the family, because he tried to kill two of them. But I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just crazy. Maybe it's just because I don't get the context of the full situation, but I can't. I can't fully, see, this is my Endeavor stand coming out, but I can't fully blame Endeavor for what Toya is, because Toya isn't natural, because we cut to five years later, and we see that Toya is now 13, so that means around the, in, the, the incident with Shoto, he was seven, and with Toya being seven, it means that maybe for the first seven-ish years of his, but no, I doubt that, because Natsu was eight, so eight when five years ago, he would have been three, three. So Toya had to be around four when the Endeavor training started and the all the Endeavor enforcement started. And then it was taken away when he found out that he would burn himself. I don't know. Um, I have issues with how Toya's obsession is characterized because it feels a bit inhuman. And obviously, I understand why it's inhuman. Toya isn't supposed to be a character we're supposed to fully understand. But at the same time, this character, seems, this chapter at least, seems to argue the opposite. That he should be someone who is understood. And if uh, they walk down a different path, then this could have been changed. But I'm not exactly sure about that. And I don't know. It's just cool seeing Toya in his room. It's, it's cool to see the three Todoroki siblings relive this one scene. The one where we see them all playing together. And Shoto's getting dragged away. Because he needs to do more endurance training and training under Endeavor. And I understand, I understand sort of, I understand why Horikoshi is showing us this. It shows more of Dark Endeavor, which obviously is a necessity because we've seen a lot of human Endeavor. And it's perfectly fine. So I'll, I rock with this. Sure, it's good to see. What I don't rock with, I mean, we see Dobby being ignored by Natsuo, who just doesn't necessarily care about what Dobby's saying, because this is, what it, this part of the chapter implies is that Dobby has said this a lot, or Toya has said stuff like, we're being abandoned, he doesn't care about us, blah 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 blah, and the thing is, well, what I will admit is that Dobby says, of course I was in the wrong there, Shoto has done nothing wrong, but Dad was, right? 
And I'm a bit mixed on that because at the time of Toya's, at the time that Toya went to attack Shoto, Endeavor, at least from what I knew, now this could just be me, at least from what I knew, he hadn't done much wrong outside of telling Toya to stop burning himself because he can't do it and that he should focus on other things in life rather than just being a hero. And it looked like, well, the reason I was happy for Toya, despite me knowing the truth, was that it seems like in the start of this five years later, he was actually willing to play with his little sister and little brother. He was actually, I well, we can't see his face here, so we don't know if he's happy or not with the life he gets to live. And I don't think he is, because we see this little dark panel of him staring back at the house where Shoto and Endeavor are training. I feel bad for him, but once again, this seems like something, this will of the hero is something that is still that was instilled with him by age four. So I feel like it's a bit weird that this undying will lasted for nine years when it was getting literally no support. That's the, th that's the thing that confuses me. I understand when you, a lot of things when you get influenced as a child can't be like immediately erased from your head. I understand that. But four years versus nine, I don't know. It seems like a long time for Toya to still be obsessed over this, especially when he just seems... He's just, he seems strange. He seems strange. I'll talk about this. But the thing I have to note is that, I guess, Dobby's sexist. I don't know. He, he says the girls can't understand what he's talking about. And I feel like if Toya went and talked to his sister and talked to his mother to see how they actually felt, then he may have gotten a different perspective. But obviously, it's more on Ray's fault for being the mother who doesn't go and try to talk to him. And Fuyumi, I, I don't know. I Once again, she's the younger sister, so I can't get mad at her. So I don't, I don't know, I can't get mad at her for not doing anything for her older brother who just refuses to learn and is too stubborn. And the, I wonder where Toya heard this, because Ray tells him to go play with his friends, or probably go to his siblings again, and then Dobby says, I don't need any friends, we're in different worlds. I'm assuming he heard that from Endeavor, but I don't know when, because I feel like Never would only say that around Shoto, and Shoto was banned from interacting with the rest of his siblings as soon as he was, as he was a baby, so I'm not sure where he heard that. But then, Ray once again, just like Fuyumi did, I believe, last chapter, just spits facts in Toya's face. To your mother, you look like you're in pain, obsessed with your father. Toya, the world is such a large place and you can do anything. Ev look at everything else around you, not just your father. Find the person you really want to be in this world. And the thing is... Toya gives, once again, what feels like an unrealistic reaction where he says, What would you know, Mom? You're only here because you got married off to Dad because he had money and your family didn't. So, I was right. It was probably just a prestigious bloodline that was running out of money, so they had to marry her off. But how does Toya know that? Like, was this a conversation point that he just found out about? Like, I'm not I'm not sure. Toya has a lot of strange knowledge that he. I feel like he shouldn't have, just like he has a strange obsession. And it's weird. I don't know. And this is this is what disappoints me the most about this chapter. I really thought we would actually see Ray be forced to take some responsibility for what happened to Toya, but she doesn't. And I feel like the last chapter was a teaser for something that we weren't getting or aren't getting in general. Like the worst thing that Ray does is after being directly insulted by her son, doesn't stop him from going to the hill. And I suppose that is bad, but what she's supposed to do, she could as known by Toya, he's not afraid to attack her. So she could literally die if she tried to stop him. So I understand maybe calling Endeavor or calling the police or something. But even then, I just, I feel more Toya, I'll, I'll address this at the end. But Toya, he goes and his puberty allows him to grow even stronger with his quirk and his chain and his flames go from red to blue. He comes back super happy to see his dad and he wants to show his dad something. And then of course, Toya's burning alive again because he shouldn't be doing this. And Toya's talking about, oh, oh, Shoto's got some serious competition, and he just wants to be acknowledged by his dad again, sh show that he wasn't a mistake. And never gets mad at Ray. And this is, once again, more evil Endeavor, which I understand, and I'm glad we're seeing, because as much as I like the new characterization of Endeavor, it shows that there was a good person underneath there all along. I do believe seeing evil Endeavor is a necessity. And I do like seeing Shoto being his own little mini hero at first. He's the one who's trying to protect his mom, trying to tell her that Endeavor to stop bullying him, and if Endeavor did hit Ray, which is what I'm assuming happened here, if he did hit Ray, it took all my willpower to not teleport into this manga myself and kick Endeavor in the throat. But regardless of that, we see Shoto defending his parent. He, he's defending Ray, and 
then uh, this this makes you feel so sad seeing Fuyumi care for Natsuo when Endeavor screaming, and then we see Ray breaking down more and more, and then we see that Toya went to the hill, and Endeavor didn't go because he didn't want to fan Toya's flames, and I sort of understand what Endeavor means here because he probably don't want to tell the kid. The, the kid who's already been told that he can't do this and go see what he has to show about disobeying orders again. But I under, I understand why the arguments for why Endeavor didn't go and at the same time why Endeavor should have gone. Because I feel like if he had gone and tried to talk to Toya out of it, like he's proud of him for being able to develop his flame so much, but he didn't want him to because he's hurting himself so much, then I could definitely understand it. And then this is where Toya burns himself up in the blaze and then he supposedly dies. Now, I'm wondering, because chapters ago we were told that Endeavor found a jawbone, and I'm wondering, I just have questions, like, who actually saved Toya? What was it? Who was it? Was it All for One? Was it some other organization? Was it the Hero Commission? I just need answers at this point. I don't think we're getting answers anytime soon, though. I feel like we're shifting away from the Todoroki family after this chapter, but I don't know. Four year <sighs> I'll talk about that at the end, but basically, we get to all this. And then they talk about Toya disappearing, and then Endeavor explains that after Toya, after he lost his first son, he could do nothing but focus on Shoto, because Shoto was like the cost and end point to all of this. And then we see that Rei explains how she got worse, and how she started to see nothing but Endeavor, and Endeavor was just a nightmare for her. And then we see Fuyumi taking some of the blame too, then Natsu taking some of the blame somehow, because he said, oh, maybe if I knock some sense into him, I don't, I don't think, hmm. Then we see what the point of the chapter is, Ray talking about how, yes, we've been put through so much agony and suffering, but the real hero is Todoroki, who's gone off, made friends, became the family's own hero, and Todoroki basically says, hey, once you're done crying, get up and we're gonna go stop Dobby together. And, alright, I like the chapter because of what it leads to, I'm glad that it's not just writing Endeavor out of the story, it's going to be the Shoto vs. Dobby show. I'm glad that Endeavor's still here, and he's learning, and he's suffering, because, you know, me, I like my characters to go through their mental anguish. It's something more lasting than physical anguish in my mind, so I'm glad to see it. However, I have problems. Problems, now that we have, like, at least interpretable ages for Dobby, his obsession makes even less sense, because he was four years old. I don't... I mean, once again, maybe it's just... It's child psychology. I'm not a child psychologist. So maybe if he was hyped up for a couple years, since, like, I'm assuming babies start to fully understand what they're doing and how they're doing it by around age three, maybe three or four, maybe maybe two, maybe as early as two. So I guess three years of hype, only for your daddy to tell you no because you're going to kill yourself, is not is a realistic way to flip. Maybe you do want to go ahead and kill your family. But... To me, seems unrealistic, but I understand Dobby's not supposed to be realistic. He's supposed to just be this big menace threat that's supposed to be stopped. But the reason I have an issue with that is Dobby's then flipped and portrayed as this normal kid for a little bit. Like, seeing him play with his siblings was so cool. It was nice to see that. Because, honestly, for the longest, I never got why Natsuo was mad. I never got why Natsuo was mad, and I never... Well, Fuyumi never really displayed any emotions about her older brother. But... Literally, I can see why now, because Dobby just didn't want to talk to her, because he didn't think she would understand, and Natsuo, he didn't even seem to care about Dobby either. This this is so weird. It's very, very strange. That's the thing. This chapter is strange. I'm glad what we got out of it. I'm glad to see characterization for Endeavor. We get to see the more manic flip of him. I don't get why he banned Shoto from interacting. I feel like he should have banned Toya from interacting, but that's the one thing that seems weird about Endeavor. Uh, the one thing that Endeavor comments on is, are you really Ray when Ray's being this strong, determined character out of nowhere? I sort of agree with Endeavor. Massive off-screen character arc, but I'll lean with a rock with it. She's a side character, so obviously we weren't going to get much out of her for that. Toya, Toya is just weird. I'm going to I'm gonna say it. I can't sympathize with them. I can't empathize with them at all, because none of it, the timeline doesn't make sense. I don't feel like he had enough hype up. And I don't think he has enough, like, mental sanity to understand that, oh, if I burn myself alive, my dad's not going to like that. No wonder he doesn't support me. I don't know. And really, in my mind, as seeing this chapter just full out confirms it, Toya sealed his brother's fate and led to this mess ultimately. I do agree. It's, this is, to a heavy degree, Endeavor's fault. But at the same time, I can't slide the full blame on Endeavor. 
can I slide the full blame on him for being a parental abuser? Yes. For a domestic abuser? For hitting his wife? Yes. That is horrible. That is disgusting and is filthy. Can I give him a slot? Can I slide him a pass for torturing his fourth son? No. His fourth child? No. I cannot give him a pass for that. That all I can definitely not let Endeavor slide for. However, what I will let Endeavor slide for and put the blame on Toya is his unrealistic expectations of life. I can blame... I can blame the society for that more than I can blame Endeavor for that because it seems like, at least from what little we got, what I need now, in short, what I need now is I need to see Toya being hyped up to be the all might surpassing kid. I need to see that because at the moment, unless I'm mistaking the timeline, which is entirely possible, but I'm going off, I'm going off Natsuo being eight after the five years and Fuyumi being a year younger than Natsuo, or no, being a year younger than Toya, meaning five years ago, the incident which ends up, uh, which Toya did that ended up separating Shoto from his si siblings happened five years ago. So Toya would have been eight. And then, let me see, let me see. Maybe I'm messing up. Maybe I'm messing up. Like, hold on, hold on. So five years ago, Toya's 13. So he would have been eight at the time of the incident. And then Natsuo is eight. So when, huh? Am I tripping? No, no, no. So then when Natsuo's eight, so when... Fuyumi's born, it's a year after Toya's born, so it never must have figured out the Toya mess quick, but let's say Natsuo is like the real trigger, so 8 years old minus 8, 5 years, yeah, I don't know, I still can't rationalize, no matter how I try to look at the timeline, I can't rationalize Toya's obsession being an actual feasible thing, but maybe that's, I just don't understand enough about child psychology and how much it can affect a person, so... There we go. I don't think Toy is an interesting villain. I still haven't. I can't sympathize with him because he doesn't make sense. That's the main issue. None of this, we were we were doing really, really good in establishing a common through line of logic, but I don't know where Toy is getting all this extra, extra information from. I don't know where this stupid, like what feels like, maybe, maybe I'm dumb. Maybe as a kid, I was more willing to just take damage and harm myself for the sake of something else, but I don't know. Burning myself alive, literally killing myself, doesn't seem like something, doesn't seem something a realistic child would do, even if they were hyped up for a couple years by their dad, who, who wasn't even hyping them up after he found out that his son was killing himself. I don't know. I'm, I have, I just feel weird about the chapter. What do you guys think about the chapter? Because honestly, I'm still, I'm still good. I love seeing more of the Todoroki backstory. I love seeing more of the evil endeavor. Because it gives more characterization and more realization for me to like the new Endeavor. I'm glad to see all this. I'm glad to see Todoroki or Chodo being hyped up as the little hero of the family. And I like that Dobby and... No, I like that Endeavor and to Todoroki are going to go fight Dobby together. That's all the stuff I like. But Dobby, in my mind, still makes no sense. I... He makes some sense. Because I can, I can rationalize it. Y'all have been doing a great job in the comment section explaining how Dobby would feel this way if he's been hyped up for so long. But I don't feel, I feel like the hype up period before Endeavor realized his flames were killing him isn't long enough for me to feasibly give him a pass. Give him a pass because it's been nine years, at least about. And if not nine years, it's been five years since his father started dissuading him from doing that. But recently it's been longer because Toy is, yeah, yeah, it would have been about three. So, eight years. So, Dobby would have been four to five years old. And who knows? Maybe at the formative stage, that's all you focus on. But, in my mind, Toya still doesn't make that much sense to me. I think he... I think he's a villain to be a villain. I wish we had seen the incident. And, honestly, this chapter is my least favorite out of the Todoroki backstory so far. Because while it does good towards the end, it does a lot of good towards the end. Showing Ray's off-screen character development. Showing how everyone's taking responsibility. Even though I think... I think this was Torokoshi not pushing the envelope enough to actually make everyone take responsibility. Seeing all this, I'm glad to see it, and I'm glad to see what hypothetical results we're going to get. But other than that, I don't think the chapter does a very good job establishing Toya as anything other than still a crazy person. And that's about it. We still have questions to ask about him. Maybe this is just an untold part of Toya's story. But, eh, I feel weird about it. But regardless, thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and tell me what you guys think. Please tell me what you guys think, because I need to know if I'm just nuts, which is entirely possible. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is That God the Pencil, writing off.